welcome back to Craig Live. We have our featured guest for this evening on the line, and we are very excited to welcome him. He is a beloved actor from film, TV, and stage, and he has a brand new show that just debuted, The Family Business. We're very excited to welcome the one and only Ernie Hudson. Welcome to the show, Ernie. Well, thank you so much. It, uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's start out a little bit. Now, the, the family business just debuted. Um, so, But for those that didn't get a chance to see the premiere episode, tell our listeners exactly what they're in store. What is the family business all about? Well, the family business is about, um, you know, a family, a couple that, um, you know, started out uh, in life, maybe a little what people would consider disadvantaged, but just made the pact or the determination to to hold their family together and to build something that would be lasting. So it's really about family. Uh, in order to do that, um, they built this business, which has become the largest exotic car uh, dealership uh, in the country, mm-hmm. but uh, but also in order to do that, they got involved in some illegal activities, um, justifying it that way. And of course, um, they they now have reached a point where they have influence and power. But um, as the patriarch, Elsie uh, Duncan, the character that I play, uh, he's at a point in life where he wants to sort of step down and turn things over to his children. Uh, without realizing that all those people that you pushed back and pushed aside and stepped on to get to where you got to get to are now uh, have been laying and waiting for the right time to come at you. And being a father who doesn't want uh, his sins visited on his children, it becomes a time of how do we hold family together uh, at all costs. Now, I'm a dad. I have four sons. And... um, what they, uh, like so many people, don't realize is having children, right, smart, strong children, they have their own agenda and their own opinions and their own personalities. <laughs> right. And they don't always behave the way you think you want them to behave. And they don't look at the business the way you look at the business. And so it's really about uh, life and family and choices. But uh, there's a lot of, uh, lot of action um, I, I love all the action. Beautiful, uh, you know. It just it's 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 just a real fun show. Interesting, but um, and uh, Carl Weber. It's it's based on a series of books by Carl Weber. Right. Uh, now, called I, the Family Business. I wanted know. to ask you about that because uh, I know. Well, first of all, were you a fan of Carl Weber's work? Had you read this series before taking on the show? Because I had read an interview with Carl where he had said that when he was writing the family business, the line of books, that he always had you in mind. So he's obviously yeah, a fan you know, of yours. Uh, yeah, I, and I, um, I, I, I have nothing but praise and thanks to Carl because, no, I wasn't familiar with his books. And when they first approached me, uh, he approached me. And uh, but I read the first book uh, uh, and uh, just fell in love with this, this character and this, this family. And uh, and I really appreciate him because not only is he a writer, but he has a, he owns a publishing company, he has a, um, a a building company. He's he's just one of those one of those people that we we talk a lot about, but you don't see examples of. Mm-hmm. And um, he's uh, an extraordinary guy. But uh, and I wanted to be uh, so much a part of this, which is why uh, I'm executive producing because I wanted to do any and everything I could to make sure that. Uh, these these characters made it to the screen, and I'm so thankful that uh, BT decided to you know to uh, air the uh, the shows. And um, but it's yeah, it's very exciting. So for the fans of the book, uh, hopefully they'll be excited. And for those who haven't read the books, I really encourage you to uh, uh, to read the obviously books. You can get into characters and stories uh, a little differently than you can when you bring it to the screen, but uh, but I think it's very exciting. Right. Now, let me ask you about the journey with this project, because I had first started hearing about this project that was optioned as a film last year. Yes. So how did it make the transition to now, I, I guess it's an eight-part ser- uh, drama series on BET, right? Yes, it's eight parts, um, and that's all um, credit uh, due to uh, Carl Weber. He got with... Um, um, uh, uh, with uh, Trey, um, 
I'm going blank. I'm at my age, names, uh, it's hard to hold on to. Uh, Trey Haley um, with Tridestin, uh, they did, uh, Carl, I think, wanting to eventually transition into film, they did a, uh, a couple of movies uh, that um, I don't have in front of me, but they did a couple other movies together uh, to sort of begin to build and get that experience. Um, and so when Carl came to me, it was a film. We we're going to do this film, and uh, and I was excited about that. But all the while, he had this vision of being able to bring it to television and tell the story in a complete way. Obviously, with films, you're a little bit um, more limited. But with TV, you can you know you can spend time with the characters. Um, but that was kind of you know something what he wanted, and I'm like, I do it. I'm I'm you know, but. But it was his tenacity and determination to um, to just see it through, and he did. So we did the first movie, and uh, he didn't release it. He's holding on to it. I'm like, Carl, you know, let's let's get it out there. He says, No, no, no. Let's let's hold up. And then we went back and did the second movie, and I'm like, Well, we're doing a sequel, but we haven't released the first one. So, but um, but he held on to his his uh, vision of how he wanted it done, and. Um, and then we finally got it to uh, BET, who uh, saw that vision, mm-hmm. um, and now it's it's those we're we're, we're showing it in in, uh, in eight amazing uh, episodes. You know, being a, a producer, I've seen uh, I've seen the shows, and uh, and they work. I mean, but that's really uh, a credit uh, to Carl um, and just his holding on to his his, his vision. Right. Now, uh, I wanted to ask you, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the cast, because you have this amazing ensemble cast, so not only talk a little bit about them, but what is it like stepping into the executive producer role? I mean, that's quite different than just coming on the set as the star or the actor of a, of a show. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is very different. There's a, you know, a lot more responsibility, and also... I realized that Carl and uh, I'm trying to see the um, uh, if I had the uh, the characters. I hate to go, you know, with the characters' names, but and not get you know you know people well. But um, yeah, it's um, you know stepping into that um, the role. I, I realized that Carl had the vision, but he also was going to need help to you know to um, just to hold things together you know it was so you know when you're trying to produce something especially when you're trying to produce something on on tv and even film there are a lot of uh, uh elements that you need to bring together um and uh you know my job as executive producer is to to help out in any way and to make sure uh, that that gets done and that um you know the resources to do that um are there and uh but it's really uh more carl sort of uh you know, coming to me when he first approached me and said, um, you know, Ernie, this is, um, you know, we're partner. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it's, it was his, you know, generosity to say, you know, let's, let's do this. This is early on when he said, you know, I've always had you in mind. I've always loved your work. I don't think you've gotten the, uh, respect, um, for the career that you've had. And I want you to be my partner in this. And, um, and I don't want to do it without you. So that was, to me, that was, uh, you know, how do you say no to that? Right. But, uh, and, he, and I will say uh, we managed uh, to bring in probably the best cast, complete cast that I've ever really worked, certainly as well as anything I've done. Uh, Valerie Pettiford, who um, we, she played my wife on a television episode. I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> but so we had worked together before, but she'd been around on Broadway. Um, you know, she, she's just been in the business forever. And all these people are not just good, but they're they're craftsmen. They've been around. Amand Asante, who's you know, these are people who've been acting for years. Um, Darren Henson, um, been on Broadway. He's, he's done TV. He's done movie. Uh, Javicia Leslie, she's on the um, the show God Friended Me. Uh, on CBS, but she's also done a lot of work. Clifton Powell, old friend, we've been uh, for years uh, going up for the same roles. And uh, Clifton is um, in any, any of these names you can just pull up on IMDb or just I am you know just uh, Google them. Miguel Nunez, I'm known for God forty years. 
Uh, he's done a number of series, but these are all, like I said, uh, actors um, who are good at the top of their craft, and, and, and they bring so much. And me getting the chance to work with them um, is just uh, Sean Ringo, uh, who's doing um, um, what's it, the black show on... Uh, uh, on uh, HBO, the uh, the black superhero, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Luke Cage, yes. Luke Cage, yeah. So, uh, but Sean is um, uh, it's it's just a, an extraordinary cast, um, just really good people. Uh, and, but uh, Emilio Rivera, um, you know, a fan of, um, and and they're and they're bringing their best work, right? And I think um, seeing uh, Carl's determination. Um, hopefully me involved uh, uh, it's um, yeah they're, they're showing up I think they see it as something special an opportunity to play characters that we uh, normally don't get a chance to play um, certainly for me it's an opportunity to sort of uh, to have a whole character uh, a well rounded character who's not just um, there to service a story and then move away so yeah. it's, uh, it's very um, very exciting for all of this. Well, you know, I think he hit it on the head when he had said that when Carl had mentioned to you that he doesn't think that you get the credit that you deserve for the amazing body of work that you have. I mean, anybody who looks you up online looks up your IMDb. You've had over 200 acting credits alone. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you get concerned with or, or do you think that maybe Carl Wood or others who cast you and stuff would get concerned with the fact that obviously I have to say the G word Ghostbusters is this huge right. fandom thing but do you think that that at times hurts because you're such a great dramatic actor Ernie but does everybody oh, immediately go to Winston uh, well there's certainly a huge Ghostbuster fan base I mean and I'm you know honored by it I mean the fact that it's been 35 years and People are still dressing up in the jumpsuit and turning their cars into ectomobiles. I mean, that's, um, you know, the industry, uh, you know, I've tried to do things like the Anne Rocks of Cradle or Congo or the Crow. Right. Uh, that's outside of that. Um, but Ghostbusters is one of those things that people um, grew up, you know, watching. Little kids, uh, people say the first movie they ever saw. And now they're they're watching with their kids. So uh, that's So that's always an issue. Uh, but my trust when I came into the business was, uh, you know, I grew up in a very um, spiritual uh, home, religious home. My grandmother raised me, and uh, and so I've I've always trusted uh, God. Uh, some people have an issue with the word God, so I'll say I trusted the universe um, and that guidance, and not so much people. And so when I felt disappointed that things didn't go a certain way. Uh, I trust that the universe will will make that correction, and uh, and it always has. Right. And so when I was, uh, people will say we love your work. I, I've had people say the same thing Carl said, but then that we want you to be in our thing, but they don't give me anything to, you know. And where Carl said no, this is uh, you know uh, we're not just doing it, but we want that meant uh, more to me than I can than ever express. Right. Now, I'm going to mention a movie that was from early on in your career. And in many ways, I kind of found parallels with the family business uh, in a right. much more updated uh, and serious way as opposed to this other one that was more of a comedy. You're probably going to laugh, but I have to ask you about being in The Human Tornado with Rudy Ray Moore. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, you know, it, it is funny because uh, Rudy, um, years after we made that movie and before he passed, uh, Rudy was asking me about some things I was doing. And he says, well, Mr. Hudson, I made however many movies he made. And he said, but I produced my own movies and I, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I created this myself. And, and I, I got what he was saying. So it kind of reminded me of Carl, these guys who were just waiting for someone to you know, recognize their talent, but guys who are willing to get out there and, and do it. Um, so I had so much respect and love for Rudy. He was, you know, making these movies when literally nobody else was. Right. And um, so, um, but, and uh, I had a good friend who's passed on and didn't get 
uh, the opportunity, a guy named Cliff Rockmore, who directed that movie that I did with Rudy. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, it's um, you, you work with what you have to work. In fact, you're right, because when I, I called some friends in Detroit <laughs> who um, had come out to do Rudy's movie, and uh, this was in some ways kind of a throwback to... Um, you know, some of those movies, I mean, at a, you know, at a different place, you know, uh, we move forward, but in a way, uh, the characters are, you know, that same kind of colorfulness and fullness um, that, um, you know, that they were reaching for, you know, right. but it was a lot more, we didn't have the technology, we didn't have the money, we didn't have so many things we we're working against. Um, and, uh, but, but uh, I, I, I just love and, and have so much respect for Rudy Ray Moore and um, and I can't imagine uh, the things he he was like so many of us say he was uh, challenged with. Right, right, yeah. Well, I'm sure Rudy doesn't get brought up to you too much, so <laughs> but I had to ask. Well, you know, oddly <laughs> enough, oddly enough, he's. Um, I, I was thinking the other day. You know, I worked with Gordon Parks, who you know was a time life photographer. He did Shaft. He did. Uh, the Learning Tree. Uh, he uh, uh, directed me in, in Lead Belly mm -hmm. um, early on, and just it was he's he was he was a genius actually. He wrote operas. He did all kinds. Of, anyway, um, but um, and so I worked with Gordon, and I worked with Rudy Ray Moore. I get more people who will come up and ask me about Rudy Ray Moore than Gordon Parks. Really? Uh, Rudy is very popular uh, in the South, um, especially with. Um, uh, white men, I don't understand quite that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I think there are certain people who love his humor, and, uh, and his humor was very specific. Um, so yeah, so he still thought up. In fact, they were trying. Uh, I was somebody reached out to me. They're trying to do a documentary about him. Yeah, yeah. So, there's, there's um, one in the works. I think Netflix is involved with doing something on him, like a biopic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, there you go. And I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm very thankful that um, that his work didn't go unnoticed because during the time, you know, Red Fox and some of those other people who did that kind of blue humor, they got a lot more attention. Um, but uh, it's good to. I'd love to see Rudy have his day. Yeah, me, me too, definitely. Now, another project that you did, and, and then we'll definitely go back to the family business. But in talking about your your varied career and some of the amazing people that you've worked with. Uh, another project that was also very keen on showing equality, you know, and, and, and breaking down the barriers between the races was a TV film you did called White Mama with the amazing Betty Davis. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what was it like being able to work with her, I mean, you're talking about somebody who is from, you know, the 30s and 40s golden era of Hollywood. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't really have a lot of heroes. Um, I didn't grow up that way. I don't see. I, I admire what people do, um, but, um, uh, but I. Oh, that must be that next. Uh, uh, can you hold just one second? Let me tell them. I'll, I'll call them. Sure, uh, sure. Can you hold one second? Okay. Um, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I think maybe the lines or something is screwed up. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm glad you got me because I was trying to reach out to you and somehow we got cut off. Well, so, we're back. Anyway. We're back. <laughs> yeah. So, right. okay. Uh, so we were well, just finishing up with this question real quick. Uh, you, you were talking a little bit about Betty Davis. You were saying that you're not usually uh, starstruck with kind of people or, or have idols. Yeah, yeah, but you know Betty Davis. I mean, I mean, come on. I grew up. You know, I mean, I it's Betty Davis. Right. So, uh, and the scene. Uh, uh, I only had a couple of scenes with her. Uh, I played a high school principal um, who uh, she was trying, she had adopted this black kid and she was trying to get him in school. And so I was creating all this resistance, but they gave me a whole bunch of dialogue that really, you know, I mean, it didn't fit necessarily the way people talk. Right. And so I, but I, I got it all out and I was actually, I, I love words. I was actually kind of proud. And she, uh, she complimented me by saying, um, it's amazing how I was able to get all that nonsense to make sense. Um, <laughs> Which was, I, and I'm like, okay, that's I'm complimented by Betty Davis. I am just uh, so she was very kind to me. You know, she still had that kind of no nonsense 
um, intensity about her, but she was uh, she was very gracious. And that epi- that movie was directed by Jackie Cooper, who I, you know, he was a kid star, and I'd seen all those early Jackie Cooper movies, and right. so he was directing, and uh, and he's there, and uh, it was yeah, I was uh, yeah, it was one of the highlights uh, early on in my career, but one of the highlights of my uh, yeah, it was wonderful. yeah, I just yeah, I'm so thankful. There have been a few people who I've just been all worked on uh, Fantasy Island with Ricardo Montalban, and nice. uh, he, um, you know, and did uh, the jazz singer with um, Laurence Olivier, and uh, uh, I, you know, I met him on the set. Didn't have uh, scenes with him, but I'm just, um, you know, so there are people. I say I have no heroes, but uh, there are people who I, uh, yeah, you know, right, absolutely, who are lights. I, I think I, I think they're lights. Uh, in the sense of showing you what's possible. Yes, so. yes. Um, well, I, I know you, I believe you have other interviews, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I, I just wanted to go back to the family business real quick. Uh, first of all, for listeners, I want you guys to know that you can check the check out the family business. It's on BET on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific Time. Um, but Ernie, just to give a little bit of a hint for those that have seen the first episode, I actually screened and saw the first episode last night. Um, oh, great! And and your character, Elsie Duncan, you know, he, he's trying to he's trying to stand down. He's trying to 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 let things go to the next generation. But he's running into some problems with some past foes. Now, can I assume that that means that Daddy Duncan is going to have to stay in the picture for a little while longer? Or are you, is Duncan still going to be kind of stepping back and letting the new blood take over? Well, I think that's his plan at some point to step back and uh, mm-hmm. just let the, the young people do what they do. But as in real life, um, that's not uh, like talking about it. If he's going to hold this thing together. Right. Uh, if he's gonna leave this legacy that he wants to leave, um, he has to. You know, he's still old school. And he has to step in and um, not able to let go now, and um, and not for some time to come. He has to be um, because otherwise uh, they're not gonna be able to 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 hold it. So yeah, that's the plan. But um, life doesn't give you uh, that opportunity to handle things the way you think you want to. Right. So well, he'll be around and be very active for a while. Good, good. Now I I know I know that you're a father. Uh, I I truly hope that that your kids don't give you as much trouble as Duncan's kids do in this series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think LC has been his wife has been busy doing other things. Uh, there's some <laughs> behavior in their kids that. But you know what? I found kids. Um, they they come into this world their own selves and. Uh, you know, when you try and LC is trying to create a business to to pass off to them, they don't necessarily, um, you know, turn out the way we think they should or behave the way we think they should. They're their own people, and there you've got a problem. Right. And um, you know, I never try to get my kids into acting, but if I had tried that, uh, it there would have been a problem. So. Right. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Uh, Everybody, again, the show is called The Family Business. You can check it out. It's on BET on Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific Time. Ernie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great talking to you. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day. I will. You too.